Welcome back to another Tabletop Review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Hungarian FEG PA63 chambered for the 9x18 9mm Makarov rounds. I found this PA63 at a gun show recently. It was in a crowded display case along with a bunch of polymer pistols so it stood out. I almost passed it by because at first I thought it was just a burst of thunder. But noting the distinctive thumb rest on the left side grip I realized what it was. Many mistake the PA-63 for a Walther PPK made famous by the James Bond spy movies. That's understandable since the Hungarian PA-63 is a clone of the PP PPK and shares many of its features. It's also commonly mistaken for a Makarov due to the 9x18 9mm Makarov caliber markings on the barrel. We call it Makarov, but you may hear it called Makarov or Makarov. But being chambered for a 9x18 9mm Makarov round doesn't make it a Makarov. The Makarov is a completely different gun that was produced in the Soviet Union, Bulgaria, East Germany, and China during the Cold War. A good number of reviews of the PA-63 out there make comparisons to the Makarov PM pistol, with many concluding that the Makarov is the better of the two. It may very well be, but since I don't own a Makarov, I couldn't say. However, since I do own a Walther PPK-S, and since the PA-63 is a PP PPK clone, I think it's a fair comparison for this review. Now before we go any further, let's make sure this gun is cleared first. And by the way, if you enjoy this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Like I said, the PA-63 is from Hungary, and based on the design of the Walther PP, and PPK. In comparison, the PA-63 shares virtually identical dimensions and features you'd find on today's PPKS. Both are blowback action guns with barrels fixed into the receiver while functioning as a guide rod for the recoil spring. Both use a single stack magazine, feature an exposed hammer, and a double single action trigger that's decocked by rolling down the safety lever. The PA-63 field strips the same as a PPK, there's no slide catch and releasing the slide requires ejecting an empty magazine and pointing back on the slide. Both are equipped with small snag free sights. In terms of differences to the Walter PPK, the PA-63's frame is made from aluminum alloy instead of steel. The PPK is typically chambered in 380 ACP but also is available in 32 ACP and 22 long rifle. Whereas the PA-63 is chambered for the 9x18 9mm Makarov. The PA-63 is designed with simplified parts and basically lacks some of the tighter tolerances and refinements you'd find on the PPK. However, this reduced attention to craftsmanship results in an easier to mass produce firearm at a much reduced cost. Compared to the high price tag we see on the PPK, the PA-63 can be found for less than half the cost and is without a doubt an attractive, functional, and economical service pistol alternative. By the way, Hungary wasn't the only country producing their own PP PPK derivatives, the more popular being the Soviet Union's Makarov. Czechoslovakia had its CZ-50 and Spain had its Astra Constable. Ironically, because of the PA-63's popularity and relative durability, in 2000, FEG actually began producing the Walther PPK-E under license from Walther. It was available in 22 long rifle, 32 ACP, and 380 ACP. The Budapest company, FEG, renamed FEG Army after the fall of the Iron Curtain, had been producing PP PPK clones since the 1940s. It began producing its updated PPK clone design, the PA-63, in 1963. The PA-63s were widely used as the standard sidearm of the Hungarian military and police up to in 1996. And after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the PA-63 was one of the many mass-produced communist bloc guns imported into the United States. Feg Army went bankrupt in 2004 when its traditional export market was mostly placed under embargo. This particular gun was imported by Century Arms Incorporated. Note the CAI Georgia Vermont is engraved on the left side of the slide here. They were just one of 
many importers, but you may be familiar with Century Arms, which has been a well-known importer of firearms since the early 60s. Surplus military arms like this PA-63 would have been a typical import item, which could have been sold as either surplus or new. Also note the abbreviation FEG Army should be FEG, but here you clearly see FEB. I'm not sure why, but I've seen a 1990s PA-63 with the same curious stamp of FEB. I've also seen a 1997 FEG P9R with FEB printed on the slide as well. I can only assume it's a misprint. So a good question might be how old is this gun? It's hard to say because PA-63s were mass produced in large quantities between 1963 and 1990 and then exported after the 1990s and sometimes modified by the importers before sale. Looking between the trigger and the grip panel we see the Hungarian crest with a two digit date of 59. This date is the acceptance mark. Of course we know that the production of the PA-63 didn't begin until 1963 so what the heck because we've seen acceptance dates as early as 1947 on PA-63s, obviously a few older guns or their parts were rebuilt into PA-63s. The circle M and the heart-shaped circle I are inspection marks. We also know that there were five variants of the PA-63 and also things can get a bit confusing because import dates can be very different from production dates. As for the serial number you can see on the, on the frame on the slide and even on the butt of the magazine we have a one letter six digit serial number given that the Hungarian system was typically two letters and four numbers this may seem quite strange however again we find this configuration of serial number on fourth variant PA 63s dating from about 1990 to 2000 this gun has the bright finished titanium aluminum alloy frame and steel slide later PA-63s had blued frames. It also has the distinctive left grip thumb rest. Early grips had no thumb rest and the latest fifth variant had an updated ergonomically improved grip. And we also know that the PA-63 model was replaced by the 9mm Luger FEG P9RC as the Hungarian Army's 96.M service pistol in 1996. So although it may have some older parts like its frame, it has the bright finished titanium aluminum frame and the newer serial number configuration, which would confirm it to be a fourth variant PA-63, which, as we said earlier, would date it between about 1990 and mostly 1996. So, to say it's about 30 years old today is probably as close as we can get to its age. The 9x18 9mm Makarov round is a product of the Cold War. It was developed specifically to be distinct from the NATO ammunition so the Warsaw Pack ammo could not be used by NATO forces against them. So basically the difference in the size of the 9x18 Makarov was intentionally smaller than the traditional 9x19 9mm Parabellum. Compared to a 9x19 9mm Luger round and a 9x17 380 ACP round, the 9x18 9mm Makarov round is basically in between. While the Makarov cartridge may not have the power of the popular 9mm Luger round, in addition to being considered more controllable than a 9mm Luger round, the Makarov cartridge typically has more energy than a 380 ACP round. It is still considered by many to be a viable self-defense cartridge for concealed carry Hogan. Up till a couple of years ago, 9mm Makarov ammunition was easy to find and fairly affordable. But like many different cartridges today, the 9mm Makarov has been a little harder to find and costs have gone up. During the height of the last ammunition shortage, 9x18 9mm Makarov rounds sold for as much as $1.60 each. Yet today I haven't had any problems locating boxes of 50 target rounds at online outlets for about $30. Hornady Self Defense are also available for about $35 for $25. Not bad. 
The PA-63 is a well-known Cold War firearm, so you'd expect to see it a lot in movies, and you do, but usually briefly and in the hands of bad guys. Such as in the 1988 action thriller Red Heat that stars Arnold Schwarzenegger as Ivan Danko, a Soviet police officer from Moscow, and James Belushi as Chicago PD detective Art Ritzik. Another film is The Art of War, a 2000 action film that stars Wesley Snipes as Neil Shaw, an operative for a covert unit that works as an arm of the United Nations. In this film, a PA-63 was used by a female assassin. As for packaging, there was none with this gun, but as my research suggests, that because the PA-63 was basically an imported military surplus gun, that would be expected. So this particular PA-63 is the military standard version 4, and it sports a two-tone aluminum alloy frame with black steel slide, trigger, and hammer assembly. It's chambered in the 9 by 18 9 mm Makarov cartridge. FEG added 0.1% titanium to the aluminum alloy in order to solve premature alloy frame wear problems inherent in the earlier FEG aluminum frame pistols. This development was then applied to all aluminum frame FEG guns, including the PA-63. Later PA-63s had blued frames. As a PPPPK clone, it's a single double blowback action gun with the barrel fixed into the receiver. The barrel is 3.9 inches in length. Sights are anti-snag small and black with a machined in front and with steel dovetailed rear. Slide serrations on the rear of the slide are well defined. There's no slide release. The safety decocker is here, up for fire. Putting the safety on will decock the pistol. The safety decocker is a bit stiff and it's not ambidextrous. The hammer is exposed. The grip panels are black plastic. Except for earlier variants, the non-ambidextrous thumb rest on the left side panel is characteristic of the PA-63. The mag release is located here. The release is smooth and while the mag drops down it does not fall out of the gun upon release when empty. Mags fit snugly. Magazines are single stack, seven round capacity with a small aluminum pinky extension. Also note that the original magazines have the gun's serial number printed on them. From what I could find, most PA-63s came with only one magazine. I found extra magazines still available on the internet for about $50 each. Breakdown is accomplished by pulling down on the trigger guard just like the PPK. Overall length is 6.9 inches. Overall height is 4.5 inches. Width is 1.2 inches with the thumb rest. Unloaded weight is 21 ounces. Well, there's no doubt that the single double action trigger pull and double action will be one of the biggest challenges you'll face with firing the PA-63. At 16 pounds compared to my PPK at 13.4 pounds, the PA-63's double action trigger pull feels much heavier. And so does racking the slide. The slide feels a little gritty. Cocking the hammer is also noticeably heavier and I'd say the PA-63's trigger and single action is heavier than the PPK's. This is probably one of the biggest differences between the PPK and the PA-63. This gun is tight and shows little wear. It probably hasn't been used all that much. Loading the magazine is fairly stiff. There's a tab sticking out here that holds the slide open when the last round is fired, but I find it can catch on the mouth of the magazine well when inserted. Magazines are well built. The safety decocker seems a little stiff, but, but it is likely to smooth out with age. The PA-63's black sights are a little too small for my liking. A little dab of white paint on the front sight would help. However, the gun's feel in my hand was really great. Pointing seems natural. The kickback is a straight back punch with minimal muzzle rise. Very controllable. Reset was short and sure and light. Very, very nice. Accuracy was very good at 24 feet, as it should be with a fixed barrel blowback design. I also did fairly well at 48 feet, in spite of my complaints regarding the sights and heavier trigger. This is really a very nice little gun.
When it comes to cons, I've been told that if you have weak hands, this is probably not the gun for you. The action is fairly heavy. You'll feel it mostly when racking the slide and pulling the trigger in double action mode. While the quality, durability, and craftsmanship of the PH-63 may not quite match that of the more refined Walter PPK, it's still very good. But the difference between a steel frame and an aluminum one is noticeable, and personally, I'll take aluminum over plastic and stainless steel over aluminum every time. And although I can find Makarov rounds online priced reasonably out there, it's a nuisance compared to the easy local availability of 9mm Luger and even 380 ACP rounds that I can pick up simply anywhere I go. Also, there are plenty of complaints out there regarding the punch delivered to the web of the hand and slide bites as well as the grips being uncomfortable. Now personally, I didn't have any problems related to the slide, kick, or grips. Another con of the PA-63 is that it's no longer in production and hasn't been for decades. It's a given that as these pistols age, replacement parts are likely to become more difficult to find. Of course, because the PA-63 is a clone of the PPK, it shares some of the complaints you hear about the PPK, such as the limited magazine capacity and inadequate sights. And although 5 ounces lighter than the PPKS, a fully loaded PA-63 is still a fairly heavy gun for carry. As for pros, one of the major charms of the PA-63 is its similarity to the Walter PPK. Now, regardless of how you might feel about the PPK, variations of the Walter PP or police pistols have been in production since 1929, and the PPKS is still in production today. How many pistols can match that? But its high price, averaging about $880, makes it out of reach for many. So a good inexpensive clone at about $300, $400 would really be attractive. The fact that the PA-63 is a gun that was built to satisfy military and law enforcement needs is a major plus and would suggest a fairly good level of reliability can be expected. The Hungarian company FEG began cloning the PPK back in the 1940s and the PA-63 has been successfully produced in large quantities for about four decades. The PA-63 is a sturdy little gun and actually very well made. The PA-63s have a good reputation and a very good feel in the hand. It's tight and operates smoothly. Its maintenance is easy. Its accuracy has been excellent. This one has been functioning flawlessly. Probably the most desirable feature of the PA-63 as a concealed carry hand handgun is the single action, double action with, with a safety lever doubling as a decocker. This gives the user the choice of carrying the handgun with a round in the chamber with the hammer down or with the safety either on or off with a double action first shot. Now the good news is that throughout the years there's been a lot of these guns produced and exported and bought. Eventually enough owners said, hey, this is a great little gun, but it would be so much better if only, which has led to some pretty good aftermarket fixes. Recoil and hammer spring upgrades, as well as even a magazine spring upgrade exists. And their replacements are fairly easy to do yourself. Upgraded and ambidextrous replacement grips are also out there. Now here's an example. These are upgrade springs from Wolf Springs. Here's an assortment pack of recoil springs, an assortment pack of hammer springs, and even a magazine spring, all delivered for less than $40. That's pretty good. I intend to try these out later to get the best performance for my needs. This assembly is exactly like that for the PPK. After you've made sure the gun is empty first, uh, put the safety off, remove the magazine, cock the hammer, pull down on the trigger guard and lock it to the side of the frame, pull back on the slide and lift up, and then remove the slide forward and off the gun. The recoil spring can be removed from the barrel for cleaning. Reassembly is easy. If you've removed the recoil spring, return it and notice that the, uh, the small end goes first on, on the barrel. Return the slide to the frame. Bring it back and down, releasing the trigger guard. Test for function. And then return uh, a magazine. And that's it. The price for a PA-63, like many firearms these past couple of years, has really gone up.
I know people who bought theirs uh, in the early 2000s for under $100, but today you'll probably be looking at about $250 to $400 for one in good condition. I picked this one up recently for $300 at a gun show. It came with an extra magazine, one with the matching serial number for the gun, and it also came with ammunition. I thought that was pretty good. A quick word on holsters. As a 1940s PP clone, you might expect that the FEG PA63 may or may not fit most modern Walter PPKS holsters, and that's indeed the case. Notice the longer barrel on the PA63 compared to the PPKS, and the beaver tails are slightly different as well as is the uh, thumb rest on the left grip panel. Actually, here's my SIG 232, and as it turns out, the PA-63 is actually a better fit for that holster. The PA-63 is a Hungarian clone of the early 1940s Walter PP PPK. They share virtually identical dimensions and features. However, the aluminum alloy frame and level of craftsmanship is likely to leave owners aware of the differences between the two. Still, the PA-63 is an attractive all-metal gun that's surprisingly very well made, accurate, and dependable. More importantly, you can acquire a PA-63 for less than half the cost of a new PPKS today. Chambered in the 19 by 18 9mm Makarov round, the PA-63 packs a little more punch than a 380 auto round, but may pose more challenges to maintaining a supply of ammo. Overall, the PA-63 remains a very popular gun, and it's easy to see why. So after a few months of ownership and a few trips to the range, what do I really think about this PA-63? I'll admit I didn't have very high expectations, but with its history as a Cold War product and as a pretty good PPK clone, I was instantly attracted to the PA-63 and soon began to see it for more than just its novelty and collectible merits. I found the PA-63 viable as a defensive carry option. The quality and reliability are good and accuracy is excellent. And while the action could probably be improved with a little tuning, the overall feel for me personally is very, very good. And just look at it. I think it looks great. At $300 for this gun and some ammo, I feel I really did do pretty well, so I'm happy with my purchase. But to be honest, although I'm very impressed and I really do like this little gun, I'm not likely to give up carrying my SIG P232 for the PA-63. I like it, but I don't like it that much. So now I'm going to get to work trying out the different replacement springs and polishing things up a bit to improve the action. But that will be a topic for another review. Until then, remember, any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.